Today, I'm excited to share with you a boots on the ground, real-time tuning on my recent show. I was in charge of audio for the University of Arkansas commencement ceremony in Bud Walton Arena. It's a 19,000 seat arena and had to make sure both the installed system that covered the bowl and the floor system for the graduates sounded great. So you've probably seen other videos of mine where I document the setup and talk about its challenges, but this is the first time I'm able to release real-time footage of me going through the actual tuning process. I'd originally tried to capture the entire thing, but I had some issues with the back half of the recording, so what I can share with you today is the line array tuning portion. I designed the rig, it was 12 boxes of HDL6A, this is what the production company had and they sounded great. So with my design, I was then on site able to tune it, but I didn't have a system processor on this one, that's gonna change next time hopefully, And but it was a single driveline from my console. So how can I make sure it sounds great with just a single processing channel? So that's why I covered today. Later on, you're gonna see me walking through the whole rig, give you a feel of what it looks like to be in the arena floor. I'm gonna show you my mic placement and where I, I gathered data, then I go back to front of House and actually go through the tuning process. So you see my computer running smart and then you're gonna see M32 edit where you can see me applying the EQ decisions to get to the target curve that I want. All right, so let's jump in and see the process start to finish for a 12 box line array hang with just one processing channel. And so give you a little bit of lay of the land. There's gonna be everyone seated out here in these bowl seats, but across almost the entirety of all this carpet across the, the basketball floor, are gonna be uh, the graduates seated here. So I need to make sure and cover that floor seating. So in the air, here's the PA, the RCF HDL 6As. It's 12 of them on this hang and it has a twin hang on the other side. And if I walk up here to the front, I've got a pair of QSC KW181s, one stacked on top of the other. And so I have a inverted gradient stack. I have a front field here, a K-12. And walk along here. I've got another front fill for this front area, a little CP-8. Behind it is a little full back speaker so they can hear. There's our podium. Another front fill speaker right here. And on the side, another twin setup of two subs and this K-12. And here's a look at the line array. If I can get there, yeah. There it is covering all the way to the back. So I was able to design this. And one thing I forgot here is I have a little cute center fill, a K-12. That's just responsible for this front area where the PA is out pretty wide. I'd ideally put it in a little bit farther in, but this is where the beams are. So this is what I've got going on. So you can see over here, I've got my four microphones set up. I have them, the front row, middle here, middle, and then the very back. So A, B, C, D, those are gonna lie up there in smart. I know it's a little bit hard to see their colors, but it, it's, it's green, orange, pink, yellow from back to front. And that's gonna be the main mic positions today. And it, Cause anytime we put a microphone somewhere, we're asking a question we're saying, what does it sound like right here? So all these microphones are on axis with the main PA or the main PA right. And so I always start from with the, the system has the most amount of coverage first or custody for the most amount of people. Optimize that, then we fold in the fill system. So you can get a little better look here. Microphone A, B, C, D. My console for the show is a Midas M32. Uh, the company system processor was on another show. So I'm running everything off the matrices. I have another video on the channel of how I set this all up. It's gonna be a really, similar setup here. I've got my left, right, which is getting all of my other sources into it, into these six matrices, PA left, right, the center fill, the front fill, my sub feed. And then this matrix goes to D BWA or Bud Walton Arena. And that goes way up there to that tech booth up there that has a console up there. And that feeds their lake processor, which then drives everything that's up in the air. So we're not going to get that today, but I at least want to optimize the floor PA and see what's going on. So I've got my smart rig up here with those four microphones ready to go. I've, all, I've already verified my microphones and I have this computer here running M32 edit. And that is where we're going to optimize things. So this would be my starting point. The only thing I have in place as far as processing is the high pass filters on where I, I'm going to need them. And that's at 98 Hertz or that's the closest you can get to hundred Hertz on the M32. And we're going to go ahead and get started here. So I have my pink noise 
running here into this channel on the desk and it's routed directly to the left, right. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. All right, I'm gonna put my phone down now and just be driving from the okay. computers for a second. So all I did was turn the PA on and this is mains right pre-processing. So this is before I've done anything. So I've got my four microphones, A's at the very back, B, C, and D. I hit this track button and that basically said delay locator on all the microphones. It didn't quite get it here on the A microphone. So we'll re redo that in a second. It's a little bit too far for that algorithm to find it. So we will re reset that there. We, that's the first thing we want to check is setting our delay times. And we think, well, why are we setting those microphones as the positions? We want to be able to look vertically all the way back in the audience and like, why am I not putting them off axis? Because I, I can predict what's going to happen. I know how wide those boxes are. I want to optimize on axis. That's the fewest amount of mic uh, positions I need to get good data. And I'll go from there. So I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and guess and put maybe 80, 85 milliseconds in here. Do it again. I'm going to delete this and then capture. Means right. Pre-processing. So that's it. So the, uh, the tracking algorithm can find within like a plus or minus, I think 70 millisecond window. So it was just outside of that. So I gave it 80 to latch onto and we ended up at 91. So this is where we're at. I'm at one twelfth octave waiting here. And this is, we want to basically get every mic position to the, my target curve here. And this is the one I use for almost every gig. And so I've gotten the levels where everything is lined up here. I shift clicked it at 2K and it normalized everything here at 2K. And I want to make sure to stay along this white line. So as you can see, we're going to need to cut some low end uh, and then maybe see if we can optimize some of this zippy stuff up here and see if we can make it even front to back. So I want to know, uh, this is with all trace offsets removed. We're already in a really good spot uh, without any processing, which is good. That means we did a good job with the mechanical design. And so I can show here from ease the side view and actually give you a link to that where you can see, see the design file itself. I mean, that's what we want. We want the, everything to be equal as we can before we start messing around with processing. So this design has done that. So the heavy lifting we need to do is reducing some of this low end. And then ideally I would have a separate drive line to different zones of the PA. So the boxes in the A section, B section, C section, D section, but I don't, it's just a single one. So we'll just see what we can do. All right. So let's start now with some EQ. I'm going to be using a, a parametric EQ down here down low. See if I can make this go to my target curve and I do not have my subs on right now. So here we go. Okay, so I haven't saved these traces yet, but what I've done is a 8 dB cut at 248 with a Q of five, and that really tamed this nicely. As you can see, I need to have some trade-offs in the back of the room. It's a little bit under my target curve. In the front of the room, it's over. Some of that might be due to floor bounce. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit less severe of a cut and meet there, but I do need to tackle this resonance right here at 85 Hertz which is very characteristic of this particular box. So I'm not afraid to tackle that. On the other end, I also want to get rid of this super zippy stuff at the top. This is going to be something I could solve here at the matrix. So I'll probably go up top and do that. So those are my action items. So again, I don't have to, I don't have to run the generator for a long time. I'm just getting an updated to make a, a pretty educated guess on the move that I want and then go from there on making the, my next moves. So I'm going to take out a dB of that. 
I'm going to go bring in another filter at 85 hertz, make a pretty tight cue. So let's go cue of like 2.5, bring it down three, maybe four dB. Seems like reasonable. I'm going to make this a high cut, bring it up to 15, 16K or so. Let's see what that looks like. And it looks like that's going to be a good starting point. So let's take a measurement now. Main's right, post processing one. So like the first pass at doing that. And let's look at this data now. I'm going to hide all of it, bring back these sections. And we're in pretty good shape here. It's following this target curve. I could see these bumps right here are probably due to floor bounces. So I'm not too worried about them. The front area is a little bright. And so I wish I had a high shelf to bring out some of that. But then the back, it's it's right on target. So I'd rather have a little light in the back and maybe make it a little less light in the front, but that's in this reverberant of a room, I might choose to have it be a little to right in the front, but still have the clarity in the back. So I think I'm going to leave it here, uh, but it looks like that's all I'm going to do to the mains PA. I like that the high pass filter or the high cut or low pass filter, I brought down some of the zippiness, but I'm going to bring it down a little bit farther. Let me bring it down to 15K. Whoops. Take out that a little bit more and I feel pretty good. The biggest key takeaway on this video is that the design is still king. Informed by the audience area, how can I make sure that this design gets the best results before we get, start getting too excited with processing and EQ and all the fancy tools we can use to make an array sound great? You have to start with a good design and then fine tune it. Because at the end of the day, I really didn't do a whole lot to make sure each of the front to back zones were equal, I only had one processing channel. So if I got the design wrong, there would be a big variance. And so in my opinion, especially given the circumstances, this ended up in a really good spot. So no matter, no matter where you were sitting in the audience area, you're going to have a clear experience in a big, boomy arena. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching today and learning. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, you can also get some of my resources at producebymkc.com slash audio toolkit. There's, I think, over 30 different live audio resources in, in that now. So make sure and check it out. Uh, appreciate you. Catch you next time.